Um, so cryptocurrency, um, what is cryptocurrency? I want to kind of break this down for you guys. It's, it's so important um, to understand, even if we're not going to do something, we have to understand what it is so that we have the discernment to know if we're going to do it. So I'll just tell you in 2017, uh, Ray Dalio, who owns Bridgewater Associates, the largest hedge fund in the world, he said, um, Bitcoin is a bubble. It's not an effective store hold of wealth because it is volatile and it's unlike gold. It's 2017. 2021, he says, personally, I'd rather hold Bitcoin than a bond. You're listening to the Rich State of Mind Show, the podcast made to make you the total package in the entrepreneurial world and give you what we call a rich state state of of mind. mind. If you are here looking to learn about real estate investing, marketing, elevating your business, and developing your mindset to get to the next level, then you are at the right place. Stay tuned and be sure to join our community on richstateofmind.com. Now here's your host, Anthony Ritchie. Hey, Blake, thank you so much for taking the time uh, for you early, though, late evening, late afternoon, late afternoon for you over in Texas, Uh, early evening for me over in Virginia. Uh, It's been a minute since I've had a guest up here where we're going to be talking about self-storage and it's been the first time where we'll be talking about mobile home and hedge funds. So if you could please just tell us a little bit about yourself, what you do, and we could just dive into this. I'm really excited. Hey, Anthony, man, I'm excited too. Um, yeah, just jumping straight into it. Um, dropped out of college without a penny to my name. Um, didn't know you couldn't uh, defer student loans anymore after you didn't drop out of college. So I had to humbly move back in with mommy and daddy. This is back in 06. And I knew I wanted to own my own business somehow, some way. Didn't know how I was going to do it, but I had that achiever, that wiring. And my parents got a letter in the mail to go to a real estate conference. I go and I know nothing about real estate, but I am like hooked on these numbers. Like I can do formulas. Yeah. And so I got a mentor, uh, rode the red carpet, uh, raised my education, um, started advancing my, my way of thinking. You know, there's always something bigger out there that our limiting beliefs are are keeping us from. And so um, I continued removing those limiting beliefs, um, burned the bridge behind me, ended up investing uh, into a course, started doing short sales in my hometown. So short sales is basically you stop the foreclosure at a real estate property, you discount the mortgage with the mortgage lender, and then you purchase it, and then you have the opportunity to sell it. So we were doing double closings where I put it under contract with this person, and then I go to an investor, I put it under contract with them at a higher price, make the margins in between. So we were averaging you know, 12 grand a deal. Uh, first nine months, make six figures. After dropping out of college, my parents are like, hey, can you do this again? And so we doubled the next year, doubled the next year. Um, did 300 plus transactions of flips and renovations, went into commercial real estate in 2012, got into corporate housing in the oil industry. And so it's fully furnished, all bills paid, hotel style, but you know, for the corporate oil guys, um, built a development of that. So it was my first development of 2012. <clears throat> you know, just putting the puzzle pieces together as you go. And then 2016, got into syndications in, a, um, in apartments and did apartments as far as um, Atlanta, Georgia. And I'm in Texas. So um, started doing projects farther away. Uh, value add property where value adds where you're doing lots of renovations to it or you're, um, you know, organizing the community in a certain way or yeah. you're doing things to actually elevate the rents, lower the expenses. Um, sold that, sold all of our uh, apartments um, by 2019. Uh, We're at the climax of the, you know, valuations of that, um, that, that niche in apartments and uh, realizes, you know, we'd been in business uh, for 13 years that time. I wanted to scale, I wanted to scale things. And I realized that when we're doing these value added properties, like a syndication, which I know you love syndications, Mm -hmm, so this is an interesting talk through, but we're doing syndications 
Um, I find this treasure of a deal. I found the golden egg that no one else wants or that I, I beat the, you know, people out in an offer. I do the two to three years of renovations and pulling the levers and pushing the buttons to lower rent or to, you know, raise rents and lower expenses. And then I sell the property. Everyone pays capital gains. I lose the property because I don't have it anymore because I had to sell it. And then I don't have the cash flow from it. And then I got to go do it again to go find another one. Yeah. And so we got into um, this revelation that, man, what if, what if we could start a hedge fund? And with a hedge fund, we could put 16 big properties, like 10 to $40 million properties in the hedge fund. So on average, it's a $300 million hedge fund. Um, and then we could have investors invest into it. And instead of selling the properties, we would then refinance those properties in the hedge fund and then distribute those refinance proceeds to the investors tax-free. So it's tax-free because it's a loan, but we're borrowing at a low LTV. So low loan to value, 50% loan to value. So we've got lots of meat on the bone. We've got lots of appreciation available. And this makes it where uh, we can literally do this every three to five years tax-free and the investors never pay capital gains. They always get to keep those funds. And then our cash flow, um, something we can talk about more, but we do um, advanced uh, depreciation models where the tax or the uh, cash flow is practically tax-free. So self-storage and mobile home parks, we realized we could scale these two areas um, and a syndication is where we do the, we buy one property and we bring a pool of investors together, but a hedge fund is where we throw a, a, a pool of properties together. So we do, you know, roughly 16 properties in a hedge fund, and then the investors get to stay in it long-term. They get all their money back uh, within eight years, but they get to stay in the deal long-term and continue making the infinity return. So um, that's the self, that's the self storage and mobile home parks, how we kind of got into the, the big picture, the institutional size, real estates and, uh, and how we scale that. Uh, thank you for breaking that down. And, uh, already you're making it sound very appealing, uh, Blake. So, <laughs> but so why self storage and mobile homes? Why not multifamily? Yeah, it's a really good question. And, um, so for, for, the, for the whole entire time period that we've been in real estate, everything has been about how might I, and these are guys, guys, these are quality questions you have to ask. How might I have an asymmetrical return? My, my lowest risk and my highest reward. Mm -hmm. How might I um, collapse the tax scenario? How might I get rid of taxes? How might I um, scale my investments? So quality questions bring quality answers. And we started saying, you know what? We're not scaling fast enough. We're really good at what we do. Um, no one's lost money in 300 plus transactions, but we're not scaling fast enough. We want to do more faster. So what we realized was we def we to zero in on a niche that we were really good at taking down the property. Um, apartments, um, the, the trend, at least uh, for the last you know, five, seven years has, if you go into an emerging market, you better buy quick because if the growth is so good, but it's so fast, you can't buy enough fast enough and you start having to pay way too much for the property. This is true. So okay. we go into um, self-storage. Let me just break down self-storage. So self-storage uh, has strong returns. Um, over the last 25 years, self-storage REITs, for example, have outperformed every single real estate and stock market um, investments um, at, at all. So you, you put in the Dow Jones, you put in retail, office, apartments, healthcare, industrial, residential, out, outperforms every single one of them. When we, we started looking at this, um, the charts and the analytics, we realized that manufactured homes, um, so manufactured home communities. So these are not like trailer parks. These are like um, nice homes with concrete roads, but they're in a community and they're manufactured homes. Um, those parks, those, those communities ended up 
making the, or the second highest revenue and, and uh, appreciating generating vehicle, including again, from the Dow Jones all the way to apartments. So then we realized that we wanted something to be recession proof. We wanted something that'd be a stable asset and um, a stable asset needs to be something that when in a depression or in a recession, um, the, this market was, was never in a, uh, a hard situation of paying the you know, debt service. So self storage is a beautiful uh, product because when there's an abundance in the economy, everyone buys tons of stuff and they put their antiques or their older stuff in storage and they have their newer stuff out. In a down market, everyone downsizes. They take everything out of the house, they downsize and they put the rest of that in storage. So during COVID, we were at an average of 93% occupancy all the way through COVID. Um, another thing is, is that <clears throat> self-storage is, um, it's, it's less, the, the rent is less market driven in competition because people are looking for convenience to a place. Whereas there's an apartment on every corner and you're really looking at, you're comparing the prices because you can shop the apartments very easily. Yeah. So the, the, uh, the rent goes up really high, um, very consistent on self-storage, uh, same as uh, manufactured home parks. And the manufactured home parks, we own the community, we own the land, the park, the, the, uh, the place that their home is sitting. So we don't own the homes, which takes me to another huge point which is that the, these homes end up having a, a low turnover. So the average tenancy for the occupancy of the homes is five years. So each lot, the average is five years. And so with apartments, we were only averaging about 1.6, oh, wow. which means we have turnover. We've got to go put more money in it to bring somebody else back in. And the reason in the manufactured home parks is so um, the, they, they stay so long is it cost them about five grand just to move their manufactured home somewhere else. So they have leverage to stay. And so the competition is low because on uh, manufactured homes, because um, with about 55,000 mobile home parks in the US, 150 are getting torn down every single year. However, only 10 parks are getting built every year. And the reason is, is because the zoning has kicked manufactured home parks outside of the city limits. So it's harder to find land to actually put one. So we just locked in on these two and realized that we can scale them and, um, and scaling them allows us to have massive appreciation, which allows us again to refinance them quicker earlier, which then allows us to have that tax-free money going back to the investors. That's pretty cool because, and I was wondering why the, that was never explained because I was, I was seeing a spike in mobile home parks, uh, either mobile buying mobile homes individually or mobile home parks. And mm -hmm. that was never explained that, hey, the reason not only was it good cash flow if you bought the uh, park or the actual home, but the retention, the fact that yeah. they're not going anywhere because of how expensive it is to move. Yeah. Uh, and, and yeah, that, that's, that's awesome. And that's the key is owning the park, not the home, which is kind of the flip on the real estate because we own the real estate, then we have to service the real estate. And so, uh, yeah, it, it, so for scale, for scale, it's like, man, how, how can we own, um, you know, tens of thousands of doors without having tens of thousands of exponential maintenance? And so self-storage, very, very, very little maintenance, yeah. um, massive cash flow manufactured home park we own the dirt the the road the fencing you know the security and so very very little maintenance and so um you know our our fund it may not be the 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 best for um a lot of your uh, listeners it's a you've got to be an accredited investors so this is institutional size this is the big boys got to be an accredited investor um the minimum is two hundred and fifty thousand. Um, but these are big, these are big parks and these are, you know, this is where you can gra grab massive accumulation of wealth and assets, uh, tax-free cash flow, tax-free equity. Um, but I, I say this because um, it's just good for you to think bigger because you can be accredited 
um, way easier. If you're not already, you can be accredited way faster um, by just asking those quality questions. How might I scale my net worth? How might I uh, collapse time? And what's what are some two millimeter moves that I can do this year to um, to um, accelerate my wealth? And um, and so where focus goes, emotions flow, and that's what we've got to start doing is start changing the way we think so that we can scale our wealth. And so for those that don't know, an accredited investor is uh, either be worth a million dollars or if you're single, make 200 grand a year, or if you're married, make 300 grand a year. Is that the same criteria for you guys as well? As yeah, the and that, and that, uh, on, the, on the net worth part, it's a million outside of your residential home. Yes, thank you for mentioning. Yep, it is outside. Yeah. Yes. So those of you that have like 300 grand of equity in your primary home, yeah, it doesn't count. <laughs> and but um you know so i just i just encourage you guys um look right now is the time you've got to think about this um and and start really processing like you can do it like anyone can do it i was a college dropout without a penny to my name like you can do it you can scale so currently in our um self storage mobile home park fund we have 110 million in aum and assets under management and then uh, what I'd like to kind of transition and, and share on something that I think this is a, a bigger part of the masses of you guys can really jump into. And that's our cryptocurrency fund. And you might not be able to get into our fund, but I'm going to tell you a way how you can do exactly what we do. So I don't even have something to sell you. <laughs> so um, let's talk about self-storage. I mean, let's talk about uh, if, if you're good with it, Anthony. Yeah, uh, man. Crypto, yeah, go man. ahead. Um, so cryptocurrency. Um, what is cryptocurrency? I want to kind of break this down for you guys. It's, it's so important um, to understand, even if we're not going to do something, we have to understand what it is so that we have the discernment to know if we're going to do it. So I'll just tell you in 2017, uh, Ray Dalio, who owns Bridgewater Associates, the largest hedge fund in the world, he said, um, Bitcoin is a bubble. It's not an effective store hold of wealth because it is volatile and it's unlike gold. It's 2017. 2021, he says, personally, I'd rather hold Bitcoin than a bond. And so in 2017, the irony is his portfolio, so he was all stock market. So it's bonds, um, stock markets, and maybe a little gold. So that was Bridgewater's main portfolio. He So 55% was bonds. He drops that completely because the bond market just totally got destroyed when, we, you know, during this COVID crisis, we started printing all this money and inflation went um, out the wall. So he literally shifted and now he's like, man, I'd rather hold Bitcoin than, I'd rather, than, than, a, than a bond itself. A couple more just to kind of set, um, set your position. Um, you guys know Mark Cuban, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. So he's obviously on everything and is in um, is a shark on Shark Tank. In 2014, he said Bitcoin has no shot at long-term digital currency. 2021, Mark Cuban says the one thing Bitcoin has as a huge advantage is that it has zero competition as a store hold of value. <laughs> so you see how the market's shifting. Um, I'll tell you in 2000. Um, 19 or in 2017, rather, we were in the same position. Like it, it didn't have it didn't have legs to stand on. But what's changed since 2019 is that um, there's businesses that now have been adopted on the blockchain. I'll explain all this in a second. And there's there's real life living. There's billions of dollars being transferred back and forth in cryptocurrency. And the adoption has, has taken place where it actually functionally has arms and legs and it, it has ability to be practically used. Okay, so that changed everything for us in 2019. And so here's kind of the bigger picture. I wanna paint a, a, a visual. So even if you're on the podcast side, you can still grab the visual. So I have my iPhone in one hand and I have Bitcoin in the other. So the iPhone is like software. So the iPhone software, is it a phone? Yeah, it's a phone, but it's software. Software runs everything. When we added the, 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 the camera to it, that's software. Software to allow it to do the things it's doing. When we allowed apps to be on the, the phone, the touchscreen, 
like when that first happened, I was like, why would I want Facebook on my phone? Like that doesn't make any sense. I'll just go to my desktop. And now to say that that's funny. Like, I'm like, it's so convenient because it's on my phone. So Facebook is software. It's an application on the actual phone. So a software on top of software. Um, Amazon software. Are they a grocery store in the internet? Uh, kind of, but they're a software company. Google, it's software. It's all software. So when we start thinking like that, iPhone, it's a software. And there's applications like apps in the app store on the phone. Okay, so Bitcoin is software. If you change your mind and you change your thought line from currency to software, it'll make a lot more sense. Bitcoin has a platform. iPhone has a platform. That platform is like the app store. Bitcoin has a platform and it's called the blockchain. iPhone has a platform and there's business apps. Bitcoin has a blockchain with business apps. So these applications now are coming alive, billions and billions and billions of dollars inside these businesses. They're actually transacting business through Bitcoin on the blockchain. Okay. It's to such a degree that um, your credit card companies, Visa, MasterCard, these guys have created custom credit cards where you can put your Bitcoin wallet tied to it. And Anthony, you and I can go to the to dinner at a nice restaurant and slide our our uh, Visa Bitcoin debit card across the high rail system. So the merchant card um, that we actually slide the merchant yes. machine through, the, the card is on what's called a high rail system, and it converts the Bitcoin instantly into U.S. dollar. So you hold Bitcoin and then you pay in U.S. dollar. So everyone is adopting the principles. Everyone's adopting the methodology. So is it currency? Uh, yeah, it's currency, but it's really a software. Um, another way to look at it is it's, it's like gold, but it's digital gold. So gold doesn't have an application. Gold doesn't have, it's not software. Gold doesn't have a utilization. You can't take a bar of gold to Walmart. Like it, you can't do anything physically with it if you're like, I'm saving gold. Yeah. All you're buying into is a, is a past view of what people think. What you and I do, guys, is we think future present. So we think what does the future allow us to do, not what does the past allow us to do. Like in the Roman time with King Solomon, they were gold. It was like gold pieces with transacting. Yeah. But guys, this is like the digital gold. So big picture is we started a hedge fund where we outpace Bitcoin and we can talk more about that, but big picture is, is that's what kind of the, the frame of cryptocurrency is and everything is being adopted into, uh, into the digital world. So when we're running from the digital world, you'll have to realize like that's the past way we live, the future ways everyone's adopting it. Matter of fact, the U S economy is creating their own digital dollar and their desire is to get rid of the physical dollar. So if you've ever seen like at restaurants, a sign that says, you know, uh, you know, a coin shortage. So please have exact change. The government's already starting to get rid of the coins. So big picture, the, 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 they're trying to print more money. It's easier for them to print it digitally on a cryptocurrency of their own. And when you start understanding how manipulated the government is and how inflation is out the roof, like inflation is 15% now. Last thing I'll share real quick is the uh, monetary policy one through the Federal Reserve. So the Federal Reserve has a chart called M1 money supply. And it shows you how much money they're printing out of thin air. Like it's not real money. They just printed it. And it, they're showing you. And they have printed more money from 2020 to 2022 than they had the entire previous hundred years. So inflation has gone from 3% to 
to 15%. It's never done this in world history. So everything is having to be manipulated to, to, to keep that down. But you and I have to be on the future mindset and realize we've got to do something to get out of the U.S. dollar. So how do we get out of the U.S. dollar? We start going into cryptocurrency and we start holding storehold of wealth in cryptocurrency to gain value. And so we're in a unique position right now where we're seeing the economy shift before our eyes. And if, if I was a betting man, I believe that the wealth shift, it might be a wealth shift as well for a lot of people that, you know, like you think about NFTs, you think about the metaverse, crypto, um, this is an opportunity for, it's like the gold rush. In the, like the 1800s, right? Sure, yeah. That's, that's how I'm kind of figure, like feel like it is. These guys and girls that are like, you know what? We got something here. This is an opportunity to kind of break it, you know? Bro, I'm telling you, you're talking about the like this wealth transfer. I'm a strong Christian and I've always like, you know, desired to lean on God's voice. Like I need wisdom and I don't got enough wisdom on my own. And the truth is that if we want wisdom, we've got to start looking at what's, what's unwisdom, what's the lack of wisdom. And so following a system that has, has, is deflating. So guys, when the inflation rate is 15%, let me just explain what that means. So John makes a John makes $50,000 a year. If John, let's just say was able to put all 50,000 in the bank, let's just say he didn't have to spend any of it for whatever reason. And he's like, I'm going to save that money that inflation rate is taking away 15% of John's money. So $7,500 will literally vanish of the buying power. So when you have, for, for those of you who have maybe 20,000, 50,000 to work with, and you're like, I, I, I want to make a big move. Big players make big plays. Small hinges open big doors. Well, you got to think real strategic where you're going to put that money because you have to beat 15% just to break even. So cryptocurrency is a way you can do that. And uh, in our hedge fund, what we do is we, we typically hold a portion of Bitcoin and then we have five or six other coins and we literally play the narratives. So <clears throat> the stock market is a gambling game because you're blind to what's really happening behind the scenes. In cryptocurrency, we can go look at the behind the scenes. We can see the, the back office of the blockchain. We can see the business apps. We can see the adoption. We can see the velocity of how much money is being moved. So it's like if Walmart had a thousand people, you know, buying stuff, you can see like, oh, there's a lot of money being moved in this place. So we can see how much we can see what coins are doing what. So it's an unfair advantage because we're seeing all the analytics behind the scenes. So I'll give you a quick picture in 2020, my partners and I, the um, Bitcoin ended up doing like in 2020, if you were in Bitcoin, you, you could be dumb as rocks and make money because Bitcoin is just on the way up. Bitcoin did 300%. We did 306%. Now, 2021 is a different story for Bitcoin, lots of volatility. So John's like, man, I put my money in Bitcoin. Heck yeah, I got 300%. And all of a sudden, John is on a wow roller coaster because it's, it's like a two-year-old trying to figure itself out. So the adoption period is happening. But because we trade the narratives, we pull money off the table and put it in other uh, coins and then we trade these narratives back and forth so when bitcoin in 2021 did did 93 percent so it's good yeah i mean yeah it's still awesome <laughs> we did 173 percent net to investors so we almost doubled what bitcoin did so volatility works really well if you know how to trade the narratives so um i don't want to forget um, so I'll go ahead and just share this now, and then we can still continue to ask questions and stuff. But again, our hedge funds are $250,000 minimum. So if that's not you, you know, again, this is really where I, where I want you to focus on. We had so many people who were asking us, I mean, can I get in? Can I get in? They're like, I'm so sorry, because like with SEC regulations, you, you just can't because yes. if you're not accredited this much money. So 
we wanted to make it where, hey, if, if, can we just teach people how to do it themselves? And so uh, we have an inner circle. So in a mastermind, an inner circle for a nominal fee where you can come in and you can see the behind the scenes of what we're doing. You can see the trades we're making. You can see how much money we're putting in a position. Then we give you a actual cryptocurrency course and tell you exactly how to do it. So we'll give you a course on how, what cryptocurrency is, how to actually trade it, how to think like we think. And then every single week you come on a, a video and we're telling you, we just did this. This is why we did it. You got to move your position here. We did this. We, we've made this much here. And we're showing you our own portfolio so you can do it exactly what we're doing. So we've got over a thousand people um, in that. And um, it's our joy to give back. So um, that's what I want you guys to start thinking. If, you, if, you, if you've got, you know, 10 grand to work with, I, it's a no brainer. You, you can double your money if you just get really smart and start thinking through um, volatility is good. If you know how to actually work with it, you guys can become uber wealthy. This is a wealth transfer. People are people who don't make the moves will actually lose massive wealth, but you guys have the upper hand and have the advantage. I love the fact that you talk about beating inflation. Uh, that is the immediately when you talked about $50,000, I, I, I feel that pain as far as, you know, 15% and now you're down to what? 42, 500 because of yeah. if you let that money sit. And that's the frustrating part. Like me as a real estate investor, my hundred grand does not stretch than what it did in 2019. And it was only three years ago because the right. properties I bought in 19, I appreciate that they have appreciated, but I can't buy those deals again. <laughs> like not right. by, not by a long shot, actually not even close. Uh, and so it's a little fun, like, yeah, great. My, my net worth is increasing, but at the same time, my same 50 grand is not stretch at all. Uh, yeah. It, but so it, this should be something for people to listen to. Not, I don't say that to discourage like, Hey, you know, inflation sucks, but mostly to say, all right, I need to make this money work. Right. I know everybody has like a, and it may be an emergency fund and you put that money in there and you leave it alone. But as far as, you know, if you got 50 grand, 15 grand sitting somewhere and you're trying to fire, figure out something to do with it, uh, the, the idea is to be at least beat inflation. And the go-to was at least eight to 10%. You did eight to 10%, you were fine. Uh, but you're right. In the last two years, our inflation has been crazy. So now we're looking at 15%. And in, in real estate, I'm thinking, how, how the heck am I going to beat 15% unless it's like a, a burr, you know, a renovation, or if I'm doing some type, something that's a heavy lift, a heavy at value add. That's not, you're not just clocking in the MLS and getting a 15%. Uh, right. you know, return, not, not now. Uh, so that is something to pay attention to. And I think that your hedge fund and your tactics, your methods definitely helps with that. So this is cool that you're mentioning that and you have a solution as well. Yeah. And, and guys, for, for those of you who are your diehard real estate guys, I mean, that was me, I'm 300 plus transactions. Um, but think about this as like virtual real estate. It's tangible digital real estate. So this is not NFTs. This is not metaverse. This is like the tactical, how you make massive money through the actual specific calculated wise trades of narratives of cryptocurrency. And anyway, you know, in the, in the course, we even show you how, check this out. You're going to love this. Like you, you think, you know, it's hard. It's hard to make even 10 sometimes in certain real estate. We have ways where we can, so for instance, when Bitcoin recently, it was at 65 grand and then it dropped down to, it was hovering at 31,000. Well, everyone who just is holding the coin, let's just say someone had a hundred grand and they were, uh, it's a 61 and it drops all the way to, or 65 drops all the way to 31. They lost 50% of their money. Mm -hmm. But what we did is we pulled, we knew that was going to happen. We can see it in the, in the analytics. We pulled our money off the table out of Bitcoin, put it in what's called a USD uh, stable coin. And we're making 10% annually, just sitting, waiting for everything to clear up. Yeah. So 
so we'll just use John again. John loses 50%. So let's just say John had 50 grand. He lost 25 grand. And then it goes back up to 65 at some point. But he's down here at 35. We're up here at 65. So when it goes back up, our money doubles. And he literally just is almost to break even. Yeah. So this is the kind of stuff we teach you. And then you're making 10% while you're waiting. And so this is how you have to think. It's like, this is the new game. This is the new way. This is the digital. This is the advantage in the digital world. And um, the course is simple. It breaks it down really, really simple for you. And then again, it's, it's, it's weekly updates. You can have, you can throw in questions to figure out exactly specifics that you don't understand. But my goal is to help you raise your awareness to, to accelerate your education to start thinking bigger and better about yourself and what your future lies. I think in these, these next two years is the absolute best time to transform your wealth. Um, we believe this will be the actual um, uh, largest gain in cryptocurrency that you can have in the next two years. So what you do in the next two years, um, we believe after that, so Again, we did 173% last year. And again, past returns don't reflect future returns. And this is not advice on what you should do. But if you just understand, that's what's available. And for me, I just had to have one person raise my awareness. I had to have one person like tell me what was possible. And then that starts changing and starts opening your mind up and even if you don't do something with me, I just pray that that helps you like start seeing like, man, there is more for me. There is a better purpose for me. I can take advantage of it. There is actionable steps. And uh, I pray that blesses you guys. No, you definitely, you blessed us with the information that you've given and you get, gave such a great breakdown of the different uh, levels of entry, right? And you've been through um, you've graduated in life in your own real estate investing or in just business entrepreneur um, phases in your life. So you have a good understanding of the, the playing field as a whole and you know what to look for. So I do appreciate your perspective. Where can people find you, Blake? How can people contact you? Yeah, the best way is if you guys have interest into our inner circle, um, if you'll just pull out your cell phone and if you'll text 31996. So 31996, text the word info. So 31996 and info. I'll know you guys came from Anthony and then we'll start corresponding. You tell me, you know, you have interest in inner circle or you have interest in being an accredited investor or investing or you have interest in um, getting more education and we can send you more education. Um, but I'd be happy to serve in any way possible. So text 31996. And then text the word info. And one last thing, and I always like to ask everybody who's on this show, um, I always like to ask, what is your rich state of mind? What's your big why, man? You seem really passionate about what you do. And I do like your progression over time. You know, you're not just some, uh, like this guy that kind of hit it lucky and then didn't know how to handle it. You've grown with, you know, in a process and you've been always been hungry for more. And it looks like you always have done your due diligence. So what, yeah, what's your big why? Yeah, my big why would be um, very specifically that I believe that um, I've been created with a purpose bigger than myself. So just like you guys, I believe that God created us with something so great that I can't, it, it would be a tragedy for me to buy into the narratives around me be a tragedy for me to think things about me that he didn't think about me so no matter the washing machine or the volatility or the lack of clarity my why is if i just know specifically that if jesus died for me i must have such a purpose that i could go do something big i can go bless somebody i can go make somebody come back alive i can go i can go raise the the uh, entrepreneurial dead and help them like set the captives free and let them see there's more in life. And man, that's, that's what like wakes me up in the morning. It's like people did that for me. So I want to do that for others. I love that. And my father would appreciate you too. Uh, speaking about the purpose of our lives, especially 
how meaningful it could be because Jesus uh, died for us. And so I appreciate that. I'll definitely tell him to listen to this episode. Yeah. <laughs> well, Blake, I really appreciate you on this episode. It was it was very refreshing. I, I always love it when somebody comes in here with a teaching spirit, willing to explain what they do and to make it very digestible. So thank you, Blake, really. Hey, my pleasure, bro, friend. Uh, look forward to doing it again soon. Thank you. Thank you for sticking with us from the start of the episode. Please share our show with friends and family, visit our YouTube channel, and view more of our content on richstateofmind.com. See you next week on the Rich State of Mind show.